third quarter training for Benicia emergency response teams focuses on triage and emergency medicine. How to assess for respirations like we just talked about, look, listen and feel. Now we come to the second killer, the bleeding. Bleeding is very dramatic like we talked about before. It's very important to be able to disregard the distraction of the bleeding and try to focus on providing some treatment. Did you guys hear about the dog that attacked the woman in her apartment and killed her in San Francisco? All right. So she died as a result of bleeding. She was brought in to the San Francisco General and they did an autopsy on her. She had no blood left in her heart. She had exsanguinated at the scene. She had an injury from the dog that resulted in bleeding. They did not find any torn major artery in her body, yet she bled to death. Her only injury was an external branch of a superior thyroid branch of an external branch of a carotid artery. It was the tiniest little injury imaginable. The emotion at the scene of seeing the dogs the emotion at the scene of controlling the dogs, the emotion at the scene of a lot of blood, nobody did direct pressure. That was a salvageable life. All she needed was direct pressure on her neck. Direct pressure on her neck would have saved her life. She had no major arterial injury. So you can save lives with direct pressure. Don't be afraid. You see somebody bleeding, clean the blood, find where the injury is, hold pressure. You will save a life. Elevation is something you can do if the injury is in an extremity. <coughs> if there's a bleeding injury in the groin or a bleeding injury behind the knee where the major artery lies, just elevate the leg. That will reduce bleeding right away. The driving force for bleeding is usually the heart, which is pumping the blood out, and gravity, which is helping the blood to run out as well. If you elevate the limb, then you will directly reduce bleeding. Blood, like other things, rolls downhill. Um, pressure points, there are two major pressure points where you are able to access blood vessels that can cause significant bleeding. One is the brachial artery that lies on the inner aspect of the arm. If you each go ahead and take your hand and push in very hard on the bone on the inner side of your arm, you will feel a pulse. It may take a while and you may have to fumble around for a while, but you will find it. The artery lies directly on the bone at that point. If you put pressure on it, any injury below that will stop bleeding. The other point is in the groin. Again, you can go ahead and do the same thing. You may need to stand up or lay down to feel it very well. You feel down on your abdomen, the soft part, until you get to the bone. Then you go an inch below and an inch lateral to the bone. And if you push very hard on your groin right there, you'll be able to feel another pulse. That's your femoral artery. You can compress the femoral artery against the bone. That, that way you can prevent any bleeding that's occurring in the, <coughs> in the leg. Doctor, what did you call the artery in the arm? The brachial artery. The brachial? And there'll be a slide for that. Mm -hmm. So this basically summarizes what we just talked about, direct pressure, elevation, pressure points. How should you do direct, uh, how should you do, uh, direct pressure if you're going to put a bandage on? Tie a bow. Why do you tie a bow? Right, you can get it undone, you can relieve pressure from time to time. Let's say there's a very delayed rescue and you've tied a, a bandage or uh, put pressure on someone's artery and the leg starts to blanch and the victim tells you it's becoming very painful and it's cold to the touch and it's not able to move. Now you've deprived circulation very effectively to control bleeding, but now you've entered into the stage of causing loss of circulation and loss of limb. You want to relieve the pressure at that stage, so you just undo the bow long enough for the color to return, for the pain to go away, for some circulation to re be restored. And if you see the bleeding is still <coughs> occurring, then go ahead and put it on. The bleeding may have stopped. The blood may have clotted. The injury may have been very small. Then don't reapply it. It may resume again as the blood pressure starts to go back up. The injury may reoccur, and they may start bleeding. Then you can go ahead and reuse that, that, <coughs> that bandage. <coughs> This shows how to control bleeding with pressure points. There's also a, a place on the wrist if you have an injury. You can put direct pressure on the artery right there against the bone. That's the radius bone, and you can control bleeding. Can we demonstrate on the skeleton where those arteries lie in relation to the bones? <coughs> So 
So this right here, um, can you see or do you need it sitting up? Let's have him sit up. That's what you don't want to do to your trauma patient who's bleeding. You don't want them sitting up. You want them lying down flat because if you sit them up, they're going to have gravity helping to cause the bleeding as well. The artery is lying right on the inner aspect of this bone. It's in direct contact to the bone. So push down through the skin, push down through the muscles until you can feel the pulse against the bone, and then just compress the artery against the bone. Any injury that's occurring distal to that will stop. Same thing with the femoral artery that we talked about in the groin. This is, this is the pelvis. This is the abdomen right here. So when you feel down, the first bony point you reach right here is the pelvis. An inch below and an inch to the side is where the artery is, right here. The artery lies directly against the bone right here. So take and put your finger directly on that bone and push down as hard as you can. There will be no more bleeding out that end.